Welcome to this week's edition of the Pioneer Coaches Show. With me now, I've head indoor track and field coach Dan Myers. Coach, thanks for joining us. Jagger, thanks for having me. So, Coach, this past weekend, you had a big meet at the Marshall Invitational. Just, you know, your thoughts on that. Um, we were super blessed uh, to get the invite to that meet. Um, and uh, one of the nice things that... You know, we go to a lot of meets where it's just kind of a rolling schedule. So, you know, if you're running the 200 and running events start at 12, like you may not know exactly what time you're going to run at. And with being on a time schedule at a, at a invite only meet that, you know, was uh, structured to where like, you know, 800 starts at 240 and we raced at 240 or around that time. I think that was really nice. So that allowed us to prepare well for next week, which is obviously on a time schedule. So I thought that was awesome, but we super, we were very appreciative of the invite and a shout out uh, coach Bowen and, and coach Deem there, um, you know, good friends of mine and they ran a really great meet and there were some conference schools and um, it was just fun to fun to, you know, have my family watch on ESPN plus and, yeah, cool. you know, it was a great stream. It was a phenomenal stream, you know, for like a regular season meet and there was their senior day. So I thought it was very, very well done. And it was just an awesome experience to get to utilize that facility, you know, a week out from our conference meet. And, and Natalie Barr, I mean, the obvious once again, sets another school record. Uh, there's some other people who entered the top five, uh, Samantha Dawson, Samantha Cunningham, Aaron Kuffner finished second in the 60 meter hurdles. He, he's been well this year, but I feel like this weekend was kind of like his coming out party. He's got more comfortable. It looks like. Yeah, absolutely. His lifetime PR is eight, three, eight. And he went eight, three, nine in the final, which he didn't feel like was his best race. And then when he found out kind of what the guy that won ran, he's like, okay, this is going to end up being a pretty good race or pretty good time. And that was a big step. And, you know, a big goal for him is to try to finish all conference in that event. He's on the outside looking in and um, a guy or two in front of him one's going to be a bigger push than the other but I, I you know I think that the way he's kind of came on this last week I, I think that he has the potential to do it and I just love to see the way he's fit in with the group he ran an excellent uh, you know our four by four team they went out there and battled but he ran an excellent first leg of that four uh four by four which even gets gets me more excited for outdoors when he's running the 400 hurdles but um, yeah, he had a great meet and um, just one of the other guys I want to give a shout out to because I, I missed that last week was uh, Brandon Bowie and he had another great meet and um, even though it wasn't quite where he hit his PR at Ashland, it's one of the best series that he's had all year. Mm -hmm. Janae Scott kind of replicated that too, not quite her PR, but had a great series. And for me, I want to see that consistency when we're going into the, you know, going into the conference championships, especially for those field events and getting some marks out there that you feel good about and one that's going to kind of keep you towards the top, keep that momentum going. So, uh, you know, both of them, mm -hmm. that, that was huge. And then, yeah, Aaron had a, had a great meet. And you talked about, you know, being able to run at Marshall before the conference meet, but you also got to, you know, compete against some Division One schools like Ohio. Ohio, uh, Dayton, Marshall, Northern Kentucky. Was did that help your team in a sense? Like especially for Natalie, she finished seventh, but every runner in front of her was a Division One runner. Yeah, um, I think that was big, and I think that like you know it was cool for them to like not just see it you know on a um, you know on the performance list or you know kind of their uh, in their heats and stuff like that, but like live action, like you know they're going just as hard as we are. You know what I mean? That's it's not some off meet for them. You know, I mean Marshall. Uh, and Marshall had a girl that broke their 5k school record by a minute on their home track. You know, she didn't go to some big meet this weekend. Yeah. She ran, you know, she ran at the Marshall invite just like the rest of us. So, um, and they had a lot of their top, all their top athletes running. So, you know, that was, that was huge. And, um, you know, they, they've, they've came a long way with their program there and they're definitely on the, on a trajectory up, but, um, yeah, that was, it was huge. And then for Natalie in that race, the biggest thing was just, you know, just knowing that you belong there, knowing that you belong there. And then she got out very smart and it was a fast race, but she held her own. She held her own. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, like 216 is the next bear, you know, her lifetime PR outdoors was 220 for her to go 216.8. Um, that's next level. And I would argue that you'd look across our indoor, our outdoor records. If that's not a top three record in the program, you know, in terms of, you know, the, the validation and, and kind of where that mark sits, it's close. It's mm -hmm. close. And, you know, she's, she's so young and, you know, we're excited to kind of see what, what we kind of throw her in this weekend. But, um, that was big Savannah Cunningham, Hannah Hill. They ran great races. Uh, uh Sam Dawson ran a good eight as well. You know, she, uh, 553 in the mile was huge personal best for her. So those middle distance girls ran well. And, um, you know, we, we need, we need them to step up next weekend. And then looking towards the conference meeting, you're going to be able to plug some throws in here, relay teams here, runners there. Is it an advantage to be able to run at Marshall the week before? And I mean, the 
the results that you had as well before the conference I meet mean, were at Marshall. Yeah, I think, um, you know, sometimes they set up their throwing facilities a little differently and they have kind of an elevated runway pit for high jump and long jump and then a flat one for those events too. So it's kind of depending on where they put us. Um, but it is a huge advantage for those, those 800 girls got a lot out of it. Um, Isabella Torres ran the 400 for the first time. We're going to use her in some relays. Um, and, uh, you know, that was a big, big race for her, um, kind of stepping up to that distance. So to run it on that track, yeah, I, I think that was a huge advantage. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I said, we're, we're looking forward to the return here next week. Well, coach, I mean, big congrats on the big weekend and then, uh, good luck this weekend. And we appreciate you coming on today. Yep. Thanks, Jagger. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pioneer Coaches Show. With me now, I've head wrestling coach Dylan Cottrell. Coach, thanks for being here. Yeah, happy to be back. So, Coach, this past weekend, you were at Ashland for the Try Me. You faced off with Ashland and uh, Grand Valley State. You know, it was a tough weekend score wise in the duels. Was it just a struggle this weekend or the competition? You know, what was it this weekend? Yeah, I think a little bit of both. Um, you know, we didn't wrestle, we did not wrestle our best. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing about that is we talk about you know, the, the rule of thirds a lot in our training um, and how, you know, one third of the time should feel amazing. The other third, it should feel, you know, that normal, like kind of going through it. And, yep. you know, the other third where, you know, that, that was really rough. That was a tough time. And I think sometimes that goes into, uh, you know, results and competition too. And, and we took the backside of that <laughs> on this weekend. So, um, yeah, a lot of things, you know, you're a football guy and you you know you like talking football you a couple fumbles here and there you get one you're four and six the other way you're seven and three yep, right and yep. so that's uh that's kind of how the weekend went in positions you know we it nothing crazy we we wrestled a lot of non-starters um especially in the ashland match right and, and like we were talking before grand valley match we we could have we could have pulled out a win with some uh maybe a little bit better strategic match uh you know strategy there at the end um but our guys effort, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't anything to really be concerned about. Uh, just, you know, sometimes you, you, you're doing everything right. And, and whether it's the, the training at the time, the mental, whatever it is, it's just not your day. Um, the other thing is too, and, and, you know, we're not making excuses for anyone because, you know, we, you, you, you take a loss, you take a loss, but we did have three or four guys this week that were flu positive over the weekend before and, and battled through it and came. And so, um, pretty happy as a coach uh, that that's right now and not in three weeks. So yeah. <laughs> we can get through that. The guys did a good job that we're sick of still getting better. Right. Well, obviously we didn't have Kyocho. He was down with that same sickness. So, um, you know, getting that out of our team now, hopefully it, it runs its course. The guys feel a little better. They feel a little stronger, build their bodies back up and uh, we'll be fine. You know, it, it's, it's really, again, we've talked about it. The results, um, for dual meets right now really don't matter. Um, we didn't hurt ourselves in any way for a region, so we're, we're going to be all right. And you talked about Kyocho not being there. Uh, Devin Easton, though, came in the 133-pound class, went 2-0. You know, what, what were your, uh, you know, how do, how do you feel he, he performed this past weekend? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Devin would tell you, too, that, uh, you know, he was a starter last year, whole year. Um, guy and guy that we, uh, you know, almost made the national tournament really was a point or two away. So, you know, expected. It's, it's expected from Devin. He, yeah. he understands. He, he's been through multiple years in the program. He went through a whole year being a starter last year. You know, he, he keeps himself ready to go. Um, did Devin wrestle his best matches per se, like last year when he's in there consistently? No. Right. But did he wrestle his butt off? Yes. Right. And, and he had some, some adversity, especially in the first match. Uh, you know, he got caught on his back once, but came back. And so, um, yeah, really proud of Devin, um, but not something that I wasn't expecting. Right. We, we knew that the competition was a little bit weak at 33, um, this weekend for the two. So, um, you know, we, we really expected him to go up there yeah. and just kind of take uh, over where Gavin was going to anyways. Um, so yeah, you know, good on him for doing the right things. And, you know, it, it just shows you never know when something like that's going to happen and you're going to be the guy that's called on. So, you know, make sure that your weight's correct, right? You're staying in shape. You're not just messing around in the practices because, hey, I'm not the guy. Yep. Um, and, you know, Devin's a, a no-nonsense guy. So, yeah, again, that's that's what we expected. And we're just happy for him, right, that he gets to get out there and um, never happy that someone has to set out because of sickness, right? Agreed. But it's nice that someone else on the team and, and you know, they're, they're really good friends, same high school, gets to come in and, and kind of take where, uh, you know, you left off there. And then looking at WVU this weekend, uh, 
some division one competition is that well when you look at it you know strategy wise do you want to wrestle some of your guys or to get some of your starters a break or do you want them to wrestle some division one competition just to get a look yeah we're we're kind of gonna uh you know mind melt that this week mm -hmm. um i don't really like wrestling them this late in the season yeah um I can see that it's just it's just how it played out this year with scheduling um, and the duel is good for us as a sense as a program. So it's not something I'm really going to say no to, um, you know, got a great relationship with Flynn and them. And, uh, you know, I, I think it can still be beneficial for both of us. Um, so we'll kind of see, um, you know, who they're wrestling to and, and what we want to do. Um, you know, but again, at the same time, one of the big reasons why I like doing this duel is because usually after it, we have more to work on than what we even thought, right? Because at the end of the day, right, this is a, uh, if you're looking at it and then the, you know, older terms, this is a David versus Goliath mm -hmm. kind of, th I mean, they're, they're ranked 19th in the country, Division One. Yeah, it's exactly. the best WVU team that has been up there, right, since the first year that I was there back in 2015, right, when we were, I think, 18th, 19th around that same time that year. Um, so they, they got things going, right, and he's got that program going in the right direction. They're tough, right? So, it's going to be one of those weekends, you know, that, you know, we're, we're going to find out even with some of our better guys, what are we struggling to do? What are we struggling to get to against high level competition? So in that retrospect, that's good. Yep. Right. Um, would rather have that at the start of the year, you know, <laughs> like we usually do, but again, it, it's going to be all right. We're going to figure it out. Right. And then we'll go into our last little bit. It, really the, the big part right now is not the competitions. It's the, what we're doing in, in the wrestling room and outside of it in our training, just to get ourselves um, prepared yeah, for regionals in, in, in March. Is this the thing that, you know, you want to do every year going to WVU? I mean, you wrestled there, you had a good career there. Is that something you just want your guys to be able to go experience you play it, you, I mean, you get to wrestle in Morgantown, a Division One arena. Is that just something you'd like to be able to do every year with them? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've done the last three, and um, I think it's a really cool event um, for our guys and, and me as well. It's it's nice to go back there and, and wrestle. You. Yeah, in the Coliseum. Um, it's, a, it's a big atmosphere, which is cool for the guys. And, uh, you know, the last couple years, we've had starters who were WVU guys, right? So... You know, you had Jordan Williams, yep. who came down from WVU and was wrestling against the guy. He, uh, you know, he actually got a win there, right, after transferring, got a win. Um, and then Hunter DeLong um, last year, right, uh, he didn't get to really wrestle against WVU because of an injury. But, you know, you got Colton Drusius on the team. He's in red shirt, but, you know, then next year he's probably getting to wrestle these guys. So um, we consistently, you know, it looks like we get one or two guys from WVU every year. Um, so for them, it's, it's kind of cool, too, for them to go – you know, back into it and, and, and get to wrestle some of their old buddies. And, um, but yeah, it, it's a, it's about the experience for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, the guy's going to wrestle on ESPN for the first time, right. Maybe in some of the guy's career. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it's a really cool thing. I don't plan on stopping it. Right. Um, you know, in, in case Flynn and them do, but I, I, I think, uh, I think that relationship is going to be pretty solid for the coming years. Well, Coach, uh, good luck this weekend, and we appreciate you coming on today. All right, guys, appreciate it. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pioneer Coaches Show. With me now, I've head men's basketball coach Bob Bolin. Coach, thanks for being here. Jagger, thanks for having me today. So, Coach, last week went one and one. Started out the week at Salem, non-conference game, but you got the win. One of those where you were up by double digits. They crawled back in, made it a one-point game, but you're able to finish it out. Just a little bit on that. Well, uh, the last minute and 30 seconds of the game, you know, we were able to get consecutive stops, and we scored on the other end. And I thought it was just a great effort by our guys at the end of the game to uh, to execute and then to get stops and not give up second shots. And, and then in Notre Dame, it, it, kind of the script was flipped, right? You start out – because at Salem, you started out really hot. You had like 19 points in the first four minutes of the mm -hmm. game. You, Notre Dame, much slower, two points in the first seven minutes. Your guys fight, fight back in the second half, but – the last about seven minutes of the game was kind of reminiscent of the Fairmont game where he just struggled to really, you know, make any shots. Defense wasn't as there as much. Just your thoughts on the Notre Dame loss. Well, uh, I mean, we were five for 29 threes. Yeah, not going to win like and, that. Uh, and we missed 13 uh, free throws. And then, but we were up, up one in the second half, so yeah, we yeah. were doing something right. <laughs> yeah. We got to figure out what we were doing right. But, uh, you know, I think it's – 
again, when we were able to get stops and get into our transition game, we got a few easy buckets and got our confidence going. But, you know, we were never able to shoot the ball consistently like we can. And watching the tape, they were open shots. It wasn't like we were missing uh, contested shots. You know, we had open shots and just couldn't put anything in the basket. And then Notre Dame. Um, they shot really well. Yeah, I think they're really good. I mean, I just, you know, they put five guys out there that really attack the basket. And then if they get you in a help situation, they, they shoot the three in. And, uh, I, you know, we fought, <laughs> fought as hard as anything to get the one-point win at their place. And, you know, I thought it was two equally matched teams. And uh, we just weren't able to make any baskets that game. This is the, uh, the second time, you know, because I mentioned the Fairmont State game and there's now the Notre Dame, the last seven minutes. Is that, you know, just struggling to make shots or is that a defensive thing, just struggling down there, down the stretch? Well, I think at Fairmont it was a defensive thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we gave up 51 the second half after 33 the first half. Um, and I think here against Notre Dame, you know, we were good early in that half. Uh, you know, it just, it just again, what's – it's hard to stay consistent when the ball's not going in the basket. And yeah, I agree. Five for 29, you would think we would get beat by 30. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we were able to fight and do some things. But, you know, we, they had a few mismatches that they exposed on us defensively. And, uh, you know, we need to make some adjustments there for the next game, which we will. And, you know, just <laughs> every game in this conference is, you know, a tough game. It's I mean, a tough we're, league. Yeah, we're 11 and 11 right now. Um, again, playing D&E this week, that's a, a game that we're side by side in the standings. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge game for us. Yeah, looking at D&E this week, a game earlier in the year, uh, you, you know, they got up, they shot the ball really well e anyway, but they got up big on you early. But as we talked, you know, after that game, you got within, um, I think it was 12, with a chance to cut it to single digits with about six, seven minutes left in the game. How can you flip the script in this game, make sure you don't get behind that much this early? Yeah, we just, we got to figure out how to, I mean, at Salem, you know, we start the game, we hit our first four threes. As you said, we had 19 points at the media timeout. And then last night, we missed our first 13 threes. <laughs> We're 0 for 13. Yeah. And I don't know if it's a personnel um, getting ready to play for the game. And we had a good shoot around. Everybody seemed focused. Um, you know, maybe got to pull the plug a little quicker. You know, if it's 1730 mark and you like for your guys to get in a rhythm, but if it's 1730 mark and we're down seven nothing, maybe it's time. Mm -hmm. To, that from a coaching standpoint to get some different blood in the game. Yeah, I, I can see that. And then after D and E, you'll uh, travel to Wesleyan on Saturday. But uh, coach, uh, good luck this weekend, and we appreciate you coming on uh, today. Okay, Jagger, thanks for having me. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pioneer Coaches Show. With me now, I've head acrobatics and tumbling coach Taylor Broadwater. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, coach, this past weekend you fell to number seven Fairmont State. You, know, you were in it really until the tumbling event, and then they got a six point difference. Just your thoughts on the meet there? Honestly, overall, I'm extremely proud of the girls. Uh, we executed so much better this week when they than we did our first meet. So. They did everything I asked of them, and I really expected a great meet between Fairmont, and we hung until tumbling, like you said. And even with our tumbling, I think that they still executed. We just have lower start values, and they did what I could have asked them, so I'm very proud of our meet yesterday. And then, you know, you have an off week now. What what can you, you know, expect out of your girls that you just put it behind them? And now, because, I mean, you, you can't take this loss and, you know, dwell on it because you have Frostburg coming up in two weeks who was picked to, fin uh, picked to win the league this year. Right. So I think what is going to happen this week is we're going to try to maybe see if we can get some harder skills in there that we've been working toward that we have that are not clean enough for me to put in yet. Um, we'll see what we get with that to see if we can kind of up some start values and hang closer with Frostburg. But overall, I expect a good meet with Frostburg as well, just like last year. And then, you know, this past weekend, we talked off Ferry. You didn't get the point values that you were maybe wanting at Fairmont. How can you get it to your girls that, hey, you know, like, I still feel that you performed well, even though the point values didn't reflect that? That's something we actually talk about. We talked about it during the meet. Um, I warned them going into the meet. We always have a different panel of judges, and sometimes I think that that plays a big factor into what our scores end up being. And overall, I tell the girls, like, I never let them look at the score sheet from the meet before, so they're not in comparison. Hannah and I will look at those just so we can kind of see where we're hanging. Yeah. But I never let the girls see those, so they're not upset about where they're at. But going into that meet, I told them scores don't matter today. Um, 
I emphasized yesterday that it was us versus us. Uh, obviously, Fairmont is a great school that we were up against. So just trying to beat ourselves was what we did yesterday, and I think we did exactly that. And then uh, they were talking about it on the stream, too, and you could tell while I was watching. Like, it was a really good crowd there yesterday. It was a really good crowd when we faced the West Liberty. Was that, you know, good experience for the girls, to, you know, moving forward toward, as the season goes on? Absolutely, I think, and the girls can agree with this. Um, we love going to Fairmont and competing. Yeah. The audience is always great when we're there. They're so supportive. Fairmont is a great team. Uh, the girls love Fairmont. So <laughs> yesterday's meet was honestly just fun all around just because of the energy that was in there. The girls were more relaxed yesterday, and it was just a fun environment for us. Well, next week when we have you on, we'll, we'll talk more on Frostburg State. But, uh, Coach, we appreciate you coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pioneer Coaches Show. With me now, I've head baseball coach Jimmy Mullins. Coach, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So, Coach, uh, looking back towards the 23 season, you finished 22 and 26, 15 and 15 in the MEC in, in a tough South division. Just your thoughts on the 23 season. Yeah, I thought, um, you know, obviously we could have done some things better. Uh, we were a little bit short on, on arms, and uh, but we got guys that, that, that really battled for us. And, and again, we graduated all our seniors and, and uh, see, saw them walk through the stage. We still did things in the community and uh, things we're proud of. But mm. We're definitely looking forward to turning the page and continuing forward in our program here. And then looking at the offseason, uh, just with retaining some guys and then how the, how the recruiting go, you know, in the offseason? The recruiting went well. We, uh, we had another top 25 recruiting class, according to, to Perfect Game Recruiting, and that's two of our last three years that we were in the top 25 in the nation for Division Two. So getting out on the road and, and seeing guys is, is, is really good and getting them here to Glenville, uh, beautiful facilities definitely yeah. help and uh, you know got to give shouts out to uh, everyone in our athletic department you all what you do in the media all that stuff helps us in, in, in the recruiting process and, um, and and those things really sell our program coach Giles and, and the athletic department uh, enhancing some of our things to, to make it a little more affordable for for the players to come here I always say you know the facilities are great but you know cost is still a thing and yeah. um, you know and the way you guys are marketing things, players are buying into our program, uh, and, we're, and we're making it cost affordable. We can be competitive with the other programs, and, and it's all inclusive getting guys here. So we're excited for the class. Uh, I think we have 16 freshmen mm, here class. this year, so and we're up to about 23 pitchers. So we definitely are a little bit deeper there. That's going to help us. And uh, I tell you, they're, they're quality kids. We had over a 3.0 team GPA. Um, we're really excited about this, these guys here and having them over the next four years. And uh, it's a great compliment to the nine seniors that we have still in our program. And uh, it's, it's been a really good fall. It's been a really good winter. And here at the start of the spring, it's been good, too. We're looking forward to getting out and playing. And you, you talk about the facilities and everything else. I mean, you were here when the when the complex, you know, was originated. And now, I mean, you got the turf, the new walls, uh, the, new, uh, the new stands, and now the, the new heated bullpen. I mean, how much... Do those facilities go into recruiting? How much does that help you? It definitely helps. And, and the thing about it is, is just being able to get outside on the turf. And a lot of the schools in our league have turf now, but uh, just being able to get outside and, and also have the indoor area. Yeah, that too, yeah. When I was uh, at another school as an assistant coach, we came here and played Glenville, and, and it was still natural surface. And But the the workers and, and the donors, and you could tell that they had plans for the place. And you know, it's taken off from there. Uh, it started with the new dugouts, and then the, the turf was put down, and the turf company is called AstroTurf. It was formerly ProTurf, but uh, they do all the big-time fields all around the country. They do a phenomenal job. They come out every year and, and check on what we're doing to make sure the turf is good. Uh, they do their yearly maintenance on it, and, and, and it's just great. And then the new uh, we have new bullpens here that are covered, heated with lights, so we're able to you know, throw our bullpens and when it's raining or any other time, it's a, it's a really a, a top of the line facility and it definitely helps in the recruiting side. And then looking, you know, towards this season, you graduated, you know, a player like Chase Wayne, all conference guy on the bats, batting and pitching, but you bring back Fabian Escalante, a big bat, um, and then bring back pitchers like Diego and uh, Austin Korn. Just, you know, your thoughts on those guys and your expectations out of it, because those are going to be like some of your three main players right there. Yeah, Fabian had a, a wonderful year. He finished in the league uh, in conference play as the best hitter last year, highest, highest batting average. Corn uh, and Diego both have great stuff, and we're looking forward to them having another good year. Offensively, we returned three or four of our top hitters as well, Zach Morris being uh, a senior this year, 
And uh, he had a good year. He's had a good career, and he brings toughness to our lineup that, that we always need. And we're really excited to, to have those guys back as well as the, the newer guys coming in and being able to look up to them and, and help them perform. So it's an exciting time. And then looking towards this weekend, you know, finally here, opening weekend, face off with Claren. You haven't met with them since 2020. Just what are your thoughts there? Yeah, so they have a new coach, Caleb Lang. He's a great guy. Uh, he, he's had a successful career himself, and he's going to do a great job there. And, and just looking at film, they're going to play hard. They're going to do things the right way. And we're excited to see them and welcome them and, uh, and, and just have a good weekend. Well, Coach, uh, good luck this weekend. I appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, thank you all. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pioneer Coaches Show. With me now, I have head women's basketball coach, Emily Stoller. Coach, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me on today. So, Coach, looking back to last week, started out the week with a win at Salem. wasn't easy, though. You traveled by 10 on separate occasions in the third quarter. Just, you know, how, how were you able to come back and win that game? Yeah, uh, so our girls have never played in uh, Salem's gym. So a little was, different. Uh, yeah, the atmosphere there was just a little bit different than what we're typically, uh, you know, used to um, kind of warn them of that environment going in and, uh, you know, giving them a heads up, just, you know, putting their putting their heads in the right places. Uh Going into the game, you know, Salem's a tough team, and you know, like most of the teams in our league this year, a lot of the bottom of the conference teams right now, they're, they're, they're really good teams. Yeah, and, they are. Um, you know, Salem's right there, and, um, you know, but, but real, a real good and talented team with Nikayla Edgel in her first year uh, coaching there uh, as a head coach uh, has been doing real well, you know, really good recruiting. She brought, she brought in some really good players, so, um, you know, uh, a tough matchup for us going up there. Uh, you know, we're going through a lot of stuff uh, uh, in, within our own program right now, within our own team, and um, to pull that win out there in a new environment uh, was a big one for us. And then Saturday, uh, kind of a similar situation. You trailed by 20 in the second quarter. You're able to fight back, take a lead in the third quarter, but it slips away. What kind of changed in that game rather than Salem? Yeah, so I think, you know, just – where we're at right now as a team, we're facing a lot, a lot, a lot of adversity. You know, in yeah. all of my all of my years of basketball, I don't think I've ever been a part of any team that has been through this much adversity. Um, you know, the girls are you know, they're handling it well. They're you know they're still eager to be in the gym. They're still eager to be at practice and uh, to to get better with like you know the pieces that that we're struggling with right now. I think what really hurt us there in the in the game at Notre Dame at home is you know we we just we dug ourselves into a hole early in it, and it really showed. You know, 31-16 in the first quarter. Um, you know, I think we just get better at uh, starting the games with a sense of urgency to win it from the jump, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where we go from. Yeah, because it takes a lot once you're down 20 to try to fight back and, and get back in the game. And then on uh, this coming week, actually, you face D&E &E and Western New Wesleyan. You know, some of the teams bottom of the league, how do you just get your girls to not look at the record and say, hey, we got to come out with a sense of urgency and make sure that we can take care of business? Yeah, so um, I think that's just kind of the name of the game there with, you know, it, you have some top teams that, you know, go into games with that kind of mindset. And, yep. and usually it typically doesn't lay out the way that the, the, those teams think going into the game and, you um, you know, you, you have that in, in just about every sport, but, you know, just keeping their, their heads in the right place and, and keeping uh, them on track with, you know, you know we're not in the place that we want to be in yeah, right uh, now. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, not at all uh, go, going into ch championship play. And, you know, we, we're focused right now at getting better, you know, as individuals and uh, finding that team chemistry and that click that we had there after Christmas break. Yeah. Well, Coach, uh, good luck this week. We appreciate you being on today. Thank you for having me.